Hello, welcome to day three of International Nature Journaling Week 2024. And today we're looking at metamorphosis and transformation. Nature's constantly changing. I'm standing in a forest under a canopy of green leaves, birdsong everywhere and wildflowers beginning to bloom. But a few weeks ago, this looked like a very, very different scene, almost bare. It's a kind of magical enchantment as everything begins to spring to life. A caterpillar becomes a beautiful butterfly. A few drops of water become a mighty river. Nature is quite amazing in how it's constantly changing. And nature journaling is transformative too. We grow and develop our constant engagement with nature through the pages of our journals as we understand and appreciate our relationship with this wonderful natural world that we're privileged to live in. Hello, hello, I'm Kadi and I live in the south of Germany. You can find me as Nature Journal Lead on Insta and YouTube. And I host the Stuttgart Nature Journal Club because I love to connect to nature together with others. I would like to tell you a story of how nature journaling helped me turning a fear into a deeper connection to a special kind of fish. It is about the metamorphosis and transformations of the European eels, the Anguilla Anguilla. Last year I met a lot of moray eels underwater, which was kind of scary for me. So as a nature journaler, I naturally looked up a lot about them in books to conquer my fears. Then I happened to find a book about eels, the relatives of the moray eels, who happen to live in our European ponds, creeks, lakes, rivers and the sea. And what's interesting is that for thousands of years, eels were a mystery, especially how they reproduce. And not too long, this mystery in science was finally solved because eels have a lifetime of transformations. They are born as a transparent lava in the Sargasso Sea, a part of the Atlantic Ocean on the east side of the North American coast. They travel with the ocean currents to the European coast, where they metamorphose for the first time. By transitioning from salty to fresh water, they become glass eels and they are still very fragile at this point. While working up their way, to the continental water bodies, they transform to yellow eels because of their yellow, brown and grayish appearance. And they build up muscles and they become much stronger than before. And then after thousands of kilometers of travel, they choose a home. And then they spend 10 to 30 years at one place and they get really fatty there. And then one day suddenly they become restless and they start to travel all the way back to the Sargasso Sea. And this is where the last and most interesting metamorphosis begins when they turn back to the salty water. By becoming a silver eel, the eel's back turns black, its sides become silver, its eyes become bigger, its fins become longer and stronger, the digestive tract stops working, the stomach dissolves and it can live off its fat, while at the same time, suddenly its genital organs start to develop. Isn't that amazing? So back at the Sargasso Sea, the eels mate and the whole cycle starts again. The eels really helped me <laughs> to conquer my fears um, of the moray eels. <laughs> and I hope this little story inspires you to have a look at the eels. Hi there, I'm John Muir Laws, and I hope you're having a beautiful and inspiring International Nature Journaling Week. I wanted to talk to you today about the idea of metamorphosis. I found underneath the bark of a eucalyptus tree, these, 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 these little larval critters. I'm thinking larval beetles, but I'm not sure. Um, and um, I put them in a little jar with some eucalyptus leaves and in a short period of time, they completely transformed into this stage here. They're absolutely, I mean, th these are such intricate, bizarre critters. And then what's going to happen is then this is going to change into some sort of adult. And I have no idea what yet, but I get to find out you turn into what. So anytime you catch a critter in your na little nature journal, 
it's just an opportunity, a wonderful opportunity to think about metamorphosis. But 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 check this out because don't just call it. Oh yeah, I know about metamorphosis because it's changing from this into something completely, completely different. And through that whole process of rearranging your body and your body parts and your digestive system and and it maintains its aliveness through this whole process. That to me is so mind-blowingly amazing. All these changes and still it's it's alive in there and it's gonna turn into something something else. I can't wait to see who this is. So what I want you to do is to to, to think about, as you see little glimpses of metamorphosis, just what an astounding process is happening in front of us. And as you're thinking about that, realize that this little critter, it goes through all of these amazing changes and, and you can change too. Think about how is it through, there's, this, this takes work. This is, people call this a resting stage. That's no resting stage. This is an incredible expenditure of energy, but something out of that amazing is going to come and it's gonna go crawling away. And so, yes, the change in ourselves, in our communities, in our world, it takes work and it's worth it. And think of, of how, how are you going to bring metamorphosis into wor your world? and have an amazing week. Hi, I'm Debbie. I live in North County, San Diego in an urban neighborhood. Fortunately uh, for me, I have a large backyard with trees, native plants and succulents. And a lot of my nature journaling inspiration comes from what I observe here, be it the birds and other creatures who happen to visit, um, as well as any changes that I happen to see in my plants or trees throughout the year. Without the nature journaling practices of slowing down, using my senses, being attentive and curious, I would not notice all the different cycles of life occurring around me. It's so nice not to have to travel far to be a witness to the wonders of nature. Now, after returning home from a three week trip, I had an encounter with a spiny elm caterpillar scamping across my patio on April 8th, which led me to an inquisitive experience of witnessing firsthand the metamorphosis from caterpillar to morning cloak butterfly. I first documented all the evidence that surrounded this caterpillar, from finding the small black balls of poop on the walkway under my elm tree to the lifeless branches that had been eaten above these, to watching him crawl up the side of my house, and to my amazement, all the chrysalis that had already formed under the overhang of my roof. I counted 72 around my house and wondered how many I had missed, where else they could be hang hanging, and how long they had been there, let alone when will the butterflies emerge. With excited anticipation, I would check on my nursery of chrysalis, worried that our chilly days might impact their ability to make the transformation. But on a sunny April 24th morning, I saw one emerge and throughout the day four more. I kept watch for days after to see many more emerge and kept track of them in my journal. As each of these beautiful creatures fluttered off, I couldn't help but feel grateful to have been part of their transformation in providing them a safe place to go through their magical metamorphosis. Having recorded this beautiful phenomena in my nature journal allowed me to have an intimate connection to these incredible creatures, ignite more curiosity about them and this process, and fill me with an incredible sense of awe. My appreciation for nature's ability to go through life cycles quietly and with such grace has deepened with this experience and touched my heart immensely. I'm so happy to have taken the time to nature journal this marvelous transformative event, not only to honor my spiny elm caterpillar to elegant morning cloak butterfly, but for my own as well. My name is Sophia. I love drawing birds and watching them in the field. Of course, birds don't go through metamorphosis like caterpillar turning into butterfly, but birds also change their appearance, especially during breeding season. Let's take the most common duck in the world as an example. A male mower has an iridescent green head, white color, and yellow bill. I bet this is exactly how you imagine this bird when I mention it. 
Some people think that females are just another type of duck, so different they are from males. Others wonder where all the males disappear when the breeding season is over, because they only see females all around. The thing is, males shed their feathers at the end of the breeding season and become browner, like females. So go find some mallard, draw it in your nature journal, and mallards are also a great subject for studying their, let's say, mating rituals. <laughs> but this is more of the most theme of International Nature Journaling Week. So let's explore the magical changes of nature together.